in this video I'm going to talk about how data analytics can be used in the CPG or FMCG industry. Well the FMCG industry produces a large amount of data but often we do not use the data for decision making and those that use the data for decision making are far ahead of the competitors. Well in the FMCG industry we have small retailers as well as we have big retailers and oftentimes only the big retailers are able to harness the data that they have because they have money to invest in IT infrastructure and so on. But the smaller retailers uh, are unable to do so. But they can do it. They can obviously uh, harness the power of data. Because in the FMCG industry, we actually see a lot of data, uh, even in small retailers. So that's always important because without having a lot of data, data analysis cannot be used. And in the FMCG industry, irrespective of the size of the retailer, you still have a lot of data to use. In the As I've said, CPG industry produces a large volume of data. So we can actually use the data for a number of purposes. For example, prediction things, visualizing data for decision making, automating things, automating decision making and so on. The problem is that the gut based decision making doesn't quite work in the CPG and FMCG industry because the volume of data is just huge and high dimension decision making uh, is extremely difficult for human beings so only the machines can make better decisions so in FMC's in the industry it is always important to make sure that you use uh, database decision making rather than gut based decision making so what are the, the use cases that we see where data analytics can be used in the CPG or FMC industry it can well be used in the demand forecasting uh, can well be used both in the supply side or as well as in the demand side. We can use time series modeling, whether other linear regression type modeling uh, to forecast demand and that can be automated. So with the pressure button, we can see what is going to be the demand uh, for a given product tomorrow or a month from now or two months from now. So we can have both short term forecasting and long term forecasting. So that can well be done using the data that we have, the historical data, and then using the model you always forecast it and then you automate it using your IT system so that the people who are in the sales department, you can simply press a button and get the forecast value and then use that uh, for decision making, for planning and all kinds of things. It can also be used in product pricing. Well, if you remember the classical uh, microeconomics uh, demand. So using the demand and supply curve, we need to decide what should be the ideal price. And uh, there are different things to look at it. We need to see how price is changing with demand, how demand is changing with price because they both relate to each other. And that can be done using the data that you have. Because in different points in time, you have different prices of the same product. And you see what's the demand. And you can actually see at what price you actually optimize your revenue. And that's the price you want to go for. So using data, you can always analyze the market competition, competition with your own products. So you have only historical data will tell you how you can optimize on that. Store assortment. So this is more about the inventory analytics. So you allocate inventory um, more efficiently by using data. And that's a big challenge. Uh, you can use operation research to do that. You can also use machine learning algorithms to do that. What happened currently is that uh, most of the ERP systems, whether it's Oracle, SAP and so on, do not quite have the sophisticated of forecasting and optimization algorithms. They are building a lot of structure around the current ERP system, but it's still not very uh, efficient or not as much efficient as uh, you see the ML or AI system in other industries. But it's, it's developing, right? The smaller uh, company retailers do not have access to you know sophisticated ERP systems such as Oracle or SAP, and the local ERP system do not support the forecasting or optimization. They do not have the ML routines or the operation research uh, routines uh, or the packages. Hence, it's a bit of a challenge. But if you have developers, you have data scientists, you can always develop your own forecasting algorithms. It can also be used for personalized recommendations. It's very popular in the online retail world. As you can see, it's used heavily in the e-commerce uh, industry. But it can also be used in the offline world. Often this is uh, underestimated, we do not quite realize. Even in the 
offline world we can use data to recommend products Walmart does it and many uh, offline companies do uh, use the data for recommendation but uh, the smaller retailers do not use it data in the retail industry so it's very easy to build such systems and you can always use uh, the advanced machine learning and data science algorithms and nowadays you know with the availability of many open source library um, and also you know the cloud and all kinds of algorithm already implemented in the cloud services whether it's amazon whether it's google or whether it's microsoft you know it's easy to develop and um, uh, implement uh, personalized recommendation engine then uh, we can also use data analytics for cross-selling and upselling those who are familiar with the retail industry this these are familiar words both in the online as well as in the offline world more in the online world less in the offline world but it can well be implemented uh, in the offline world as well where you actually use analytics to see if you can cross-sell or upsell products and you can customize different kinds of discount offers based on the customer data that you have and the customer behavior that you understand from the data. And it can well be done through data visualization, to you know, lots of uh, basic uh, data analysis like whether it's linear regression, whether it's clustering, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, those who are not familiar with cross-selling, off-selling, cross-selling is basically you know selling a, a very complementary product or a different product which is related to the product uh, that the customer is is buying uh, so it's product a and product b so product a is related to product pretty so somebody goes product a you also sell product b to him and that's upselling on the other hand is simply you know selling a different version of the same type of product okay both are very profitable for the retailers uh, data analytics can also be used for different types of management decisions, whether it's product development, whether it's product launching, whether it's revenue optimization and so on. Product development is an important thing nowadays in the e-commerce company, so it's very well used in the online world, but not often used in the, or in the offline world. Based on customer behavior, product launching is very important. We use the A-B testing, right, for product launching to see what actually works better for you. Uh, A-B testing can well be used for product development as well. So many e-commerce companies use them um, and all kinds of retailers actually can use A-B testing in order to come up with better decisions. So, you know, managers, senior management can use uh, advanced analytics as well in order to come up with better decisions. Revenue optimization is very important on how you can actually optimize your revenue using the data. So lots of uh, you know, ready-made uh, or built-in algorithms are available. For, for you to you know uh, you use them to optimize your revenue so that can also be used what are the current challenges in the industry in the CPG industry so do not actually know much about data analytics so there is a lack of awareness so uh, not just the senior managers even the mid-level managers or the junior managers do not quite know they do not uh, know much about the impact it makes um, in the revenue and the profit Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, the current IT systems, the ERP systems that companies have been using for decades now, uh, they do not support advanced analytics or machine learning or artificial intelligence. And the cost of implementing these algorithms is also quite huge. And that's one big reason why the, uh, companies do not go for it. Or only the big companies go for, big retailers go for implementing AI and ML in, in ERP in the ERP system but not the smaller ones and the, the problem with the data governance right uh, so unlike in finance unlike in uh, any other industry the data governance is, is very bad in the retail industry and the data that they have is not of good quality to be usable for uh, data analytics so that's one area where uh, retail companies are also trying their best to improve on um, so what the future looks like for CPG uh, industry, for data analytics? Well, consumer data will be used or it will be the center of decision making uh, for sure in future. And uh, retailers that will use data for decision making will have a serious advantage over the, over the competitors. That's what uh, I believe. Automated decision making is an important area where analytics will, will play a big role because it's for big companies um, It's very difficult that management will decide uh, Everything right? it has to be more automatic. It has to be more uh, you know 
scientific, so decision making will be very automated and through IT systems, especially for the small ticket clients, uh, you know, where you do not lose much by making the small mistake. So automated decision making will be given preference over, so there will be no waiting time uh, for analysts or salespeople to take a decision. It will be you know purely automatic. So you, you know, but within a microsecond, uh, a decision will be made. Uh, tech will be the center of innovation in CPG. That's already happening, but it's going to happen even more.